Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Beginner's Guide to the Book of Romans. We are on part eight. Wow. And we're looking at the key theme of justification in today's video. My name is Fitz Crittle. Welcome to the Minister's Corner. Thank you so much for tuning in. Just want to say God bless you. Do me a favor. If you have been watching this series on the book of Romans for the past eight weeks, seven weeks, five weeks, one week, do me a favor. Uh, I really appreciate your comments, your feedback. So down in the comment section below, just let me know how things are going, if you're enjoying this. And if you are, do a favor, hit that like button as well. Well, family, I'm ready to jump on in in today's content. I'm excited to talk about this idea of justification. I've pulled this chart from my Logos Bible Software program, and there is a resource called the Lexham Survey of Theology. And so it has this spirit's application of salvation. When we think about salvation, the Holy Spirit is our administrator, right? You see all of these branches. We see all of this work that the Holy Spirit does in applying our salvation to us. So we see all of these branches, these activities, a calling, the regeneration, conversion, union with Christ. And of course, today's topic, justification, adoption, sanctification. We're going to talk about Paul's topic of, of sanctification next week. We have the permanence of salvation and we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And at some point in 2024, I definitely want to go over all of these branches. But today we're going over justification. And justification answers a very important question because the Bible tells us, you know, Romans 3, 23, that, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says there's no one righteous, no, not one. So what happens to the guilt of our sin? If we're all born in this particular condition, when we come to Christ in salvation, when we feel the call and we respond, and we give our lives to Christ, we accept him as Lord and Savior, what happens to the guilt of our sin? That is what justification answers. It answers this particular question. Now, I'm pulling today's content from a book called Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. Uh, it, it's a very heavy doctrinal book. Um, it's <laughs> about 1,200 pages. So if that's too much, he has another book called Biblical Doctrine. So that's a smaller version uh, from Systematic Theology. And then even from the Biblical Doctrine book, he has an even smaller book, which is um, 20 beliefs or 21 beliefs every believer should know. Uh, so that one's a whole lot smaller. Links to all three of these books will be down in the description below. And so you can pick and choose whatever is your particular flavor. But Definitely worth adding to your library. So I'm pulling the content from Systematic Theology today. So let's start with a working definition of justification. So justification is an instantaneous legal act of God in which he thinks of our sins as forgiven and Christ's righteousness as belonging to us and declares us to be righteous in his sight. So this is our general definition, and we're going to build upon this in this particular video. So let's go ahead and deal with the first point, and that is of justification includes a legal declaration by God. Romans 3, 24, and this is the ESV, it says, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, if we do a word study on the word justified, the word, the verb justified in the New Testament has a range of meanings, but a very common sense is to declare righteous. This is why you see the word legal declaration by God, because this is something that he does. This is a, a decree from him. God has made a decision, and this is by his grace. It is a gift he bestows upon the believer 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So as you give your life to Christ, those who come to Christ in salvation, you receive this gift, this gift that God declares you righteous. He declares you just. And it is by his grace. So this, when you sing the song Amazing Grace, you can think of things like justification. This is just an awesome gift of God that he bestows upon the believer. Our next point, God declares us to be just in his sight. So let's look at Romans chapter 8, verses 33 through 34. Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. And this is a very important point. Lean into this one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting at the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Very powerful verse of scripture through here, how God himself has given us right standing. So this is something that God does. And the word condemnation, condemn is a heavy word in the Bible, because it speaks of being pronounced guilty, right? And an eternal guilt. Well, those of us who are justified, this means that God declares that we have no penalty to pay for sin. That's condemnation. Those who are condemned will pay the penalty for sin. But because the Christian has been declared righteous, just in the sight of the Lord, there's no ultimate eternal penalty to pay for sin, including past, present, and future sins. Now, this doesn't mean that we aren't punished or chastised by the Lord when we sin because we are, because he is our father and we are his children. So therefore, if we sin, there is punishment. And the Bible talks about how we should confess our sins, you know, and that he is faithful and just to forgive us for all sins and all unrighteousness. So sin, uh, we don't have a license to commit it. But when it comes to paying that ultimate price, that condemnation, it does not apply to the believer. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at Romans chapter 8, verse 1, a few verses up, it says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. This is what it means to say who the son has set free is free indeed. We are free from the power and the penalty of sin because we have been declared righteous in his sight. And so this means that we are not subject to any charge or guilt or condemnation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next, God can declare us to be just because he imputes Christ's righteousness. You see, the work has been done on the cross. So when Jesus died and when he was raised from the dead, that righteousness that Jesus attained for us is imputed. It is given to us. Romans 4, verse 3 for the scripture tells us, and so he's using Abraham as an example, and he also uses David as an example in Romans chapter 4. It says, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. So this idea of God counting Abraham as righteous is this idea of imputed. When we say that God imputes Christ's righteousness to us, it means that God thinks of Christ's righteousness as belonging to us or regards it as belonging to us. This is why we stand before God as being righteous, as being just. It's because Christ's righteousness 
has been imputed, right? It has been placed upon us. So in his sight, when it comes to eternity, when it comes to our standing with God, his son's righteousness has been imputed, has been placed upon us. So therefore, that is how we stand right in his sight. That's why we are just in his sight. It has nothing to do with us. It is, there, you can't work for this. There is no seed you can sow. There is no law you can obey that will allow us to stand right before God. You see where he uses Abraham as an example. He says, because of Abraham's faith, it was counted to him as righteousness. As we stand in faith in terms of our faith in Jesus Christ, it is counted to us as being righteous. Romans chapter four, verse six. Here he uses David as an example. David also spoke of this when he, de when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. It is a gift. It is the grace of God that he has given us. And that is truly, truly amazing. Justification comes to us entirely by God's grace, as we have stated repeatedly, not on account of any merit in ourselves. And we kind of read this already, so I want to read it again in your hearing. This is Romans 3, 23 through 24 in the NLT. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty of our sins. Praise the Lord. This is just totally the work of God. God justifies us through our faith in Christ. Again, God justifies us through our faith in Christ. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 3, and we're going to read 25 through 26 in the NOT. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past, for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in his present time, in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. It can't be more clear than this. People are made right when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. God makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, family, that's all I have for you on this wonderful grace that God has given to believers, this doctrine of justification. To God be the glory. Well, if you made it this far in the video, if you haven't already, will you consider subscribing to the channel? And if you do so, do me a favor, please hit the notifications bell. That way you are notified every time new content is uploaded. Well, family, this is Fitz Criddle. Just want to say God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.